crop safety is and the safety of the food is a main thing and crop protection is a part of that and there's so much you can put on your crop to protect it and get it to the next level that I think that the biggest fear for people is they just don't know and it's ever-changing it's I mean there's so much research and money gone into technology to to produce the food that's safe for people and it's pretty awesome to be part of the industry that feeds the world in this series, we are going to look at the people and the technology behind aerial application in Canada and how owners, companies, and government agencies work together to keep our agriculture and forestry industries productive, healthy, and sustainable. We'll begin with some of the early Canadian pioneers in the field and then meet people from across the country who own and operate aerial application businesses. We'll also look at some of the latest research and leading-edge technologies in today's aerial application world. But first, a little background to the Canadian Aerial Applicators Association, or CAAA. Today across Canada, there are approximately 150 aerial application businesses, with the CAAA representing more than 200 members. And our mandate is clear, to promote safety and professionalism amongst our members. The ongoing education of members is also high on our list of priorities, with training programs designed to ensure safe and efficient aerial application operations across the board. For us, training is really important because it, uh, if we don't do our job properly, we're putting the pilots' lives in, da in danger, and we could also on the ground have some safety hazards if we're not trained properly. Our attitude towards safety is definitely uh, front line as far as I'm concerned. We are also active supporters of environmental safety because a healthy environment helps ensure a sustainable industry and the well-being of all those involved in the aerial application industry. So biotechnology is really almost as much consumer driven as it is farmer driven and uh, we've, we've changed crops from the standpoint of keeping them extra clean so we can produce extra yield, changing the health benefits of the crops, coming up with products that we can spray to kill damaging insects while leaving the beneficials alive. If people object to using chemicals, it's obviously a personal choice. Um, at the end of the day, to produce what we need to feed even just the Canadian population, we need to grow as big a crop as we can, as well as the healthiest crop we can. And the companies that support our business and the products that we talk to farmers about are designed to do that, to meet the consumer demand in a healthy way while keeping the field clean and growing a big crop. The first big step in using aircraft for crop protection occurred in the U.S. in 1921 when John McCready applied insecticide dust by air on trees infected with the Catalpa Sphinx moth. This was the first use of aircraft in North America to directly apply a pesticide and was so successful that it spawned the crop dusting industry, so named because the first products delivered were in a dust-like formulation. The first dusting in Canada was carried out in 1927 in a Keystone Puffer seaplane on Cape Breton Island in Nova Scotia. The Great Depression and Dust Bowl of the 1930s put agricultural aviation on hold, as did the outbreak of World War II. However, the post-war years saw a boom in agricultural aviation due to the ready supply of cheap war surplus aircraft and a booming economy where crop protection was becoming an important operation. Across the country, there were crops of all types that required protection, especially in times of massive outbreaks of disease or insects, where aircraft could cover large areas in minimum time to halt the devastation. Throughout the 50s, there were a rapidly increasing number of acres that needed to be treated, and new aircraft were appearing that were specifically designed for the job. The new aircraft were larger, faster, and much more rugged than those before. And the same story was seen in the forestry industry, where large tracts of timber were being decimated by spruce budworm. In the early 50s, large-scale operations began to combat this deadly plague, and by 1979, the fleet was able to treat over 6 million hectares in one month. This trend spread quickly with large-scale aerial forestry operations across the country by the 70s and 80s. The post-war years also saw the introduction of the helicopter in aerial spraying, especially where field sizes were comparatively small or maneuvering room was tight. As the 20th century came to a close, new technologies would lead to even more effective ways to use aircraft in the agricultural and forestry industries. Well, 
I guess when we started spraying, we had a pressure gauge and we had people standing in the fields flagging. And then we uh, started with an auto flagger, which dropped white pieces of paper on the ground. And in about 85 or 6, we got our first flow meter. 1995, I was involved with two other companies in the first uh, GPS that went into an airplane, and that was the biggest change that's happened to egg aviation. Along with these technical innovations, there was also ongoing research for new and more effective crop protection products. Everything in Canada is totally based on science when it's registered. The products are so specific nowadays, there's any new products are not typically broad spectrum anymore. We actually have a product now that's an insecticide that we can spray on flowering canola and will not adversely affect honeybees. So, you know, the, the advances that we've made in the last 20 or 30 years is phenomenal as far as food safety and public safety and that type of thing. Today, crop protection products enable us to increase yields to almost double what they would be without pest control measures. Crop protection is vital to the potato production within Alberta. Without crop protection, we don't have a crop. One of the largest changes that I've seen is that aerial application used to be a sideline. It was a secondary business. You might be a farmer and you spray your own crops and then you will do your neighbor's crops. It has now evolved into a business and it's a large industry. And that's been very exciting. With that business growth has come all of the things that are necessary for sustainability. For increased professionalism, increased training, greater focus on safety, adapting and using technology, using information to do a better job. So that, that has been significant. It's not just flying 100 hours, getting the crop sprayed. It's a business and it's a growth business. Successful operations go far beyond the most difficult ideas in our life. To include a wide range of supporting personnel involved in the day-to-day -day operations, that begins with our group of staff who coordinate customers in the last experience and dozens of other business to get a smooth workflow from customer to delivery. So as an office manager, everything comes through the office. You get calls coming in, you've got to do the booking, the billing, you've got to pay the pilots, make sure everyone's safe, get the loaders ready to go, you've got to make sure the chemicals here, and you've got to, you've got customers calling you, they want to know if they've been booked, if they've been sprayed yet, what time, so it's really all about record keeping and that's a very important part of, of working in the aerial application business. This isn't a 9 to 5 job that you work typically. Um, we try and have a couple people working in the office and work shifts. We want to make sure someone's here seven days a week. And what we do now actually is we have a great software online so we can do that from anywhere. I can book spray jobs and the pilots can see them. Another critically important part of operations is making sure all systems are properly calibrated to ensure products are delivered accurately and effectively. Working with the Canadian Aerial Applicators Association to calibrate spray planes. It's part of requirement by the province as well as insurance companies that every two years airplanes get put through a spray pattern clinic so that we can analyze what the, the spray patterns are doing and the quality of job that we're doing the droplet size, the droplet spectrum, just uh, it's just another way that as an industry we can uh, show that we are being professional and doing everything we can to be, to be safe. Technology and experience go together to provide producers an important resource to use as part of daily operations. Yeah, the, uh, the outbreak of any, any bug would be devastating. It, within hours it can wipe out the field. So if you can get in there with with an area application to get rid of the bugs. It's done in no time and there's no tracks in the field because putting tracks in the field will take away your yield. The planes can come in and get it done with. Bugs, bugs will take your crop right out and it won't come back. Running an aerial application business means keeping track of people, priorities, and machines to achieve the best service possible for crop producers across the country. Owning a spray business owner operator is, is there's a lot more to it than just having the airplanes and doing the flying. And it seems simple when you just see that part. 
but there's all the things behind it that makes it all work. Of course, safety is a big thing, number one thing. Air, proper aircraft maintenance and training of pilots and training all this, the other staff that keep the paperwork flowing and the maintenance done and the, it's, there's a lot more to it than meets the eye if you just happen to drive into the airport and see an airplane taking off. The long hours required are balanced by the satisfaction of seeing healthy crops come to a full harvest. We uh, start out with the organization directly from the farmer and agronomist deciding what's needed for the best application for what we're doing and the disease or insect that we're trying to get. And uh, from that point we end up taking it into the system and mapping with everything satellite imaging and GIS files that go to the airplanes and uh, the pilots take it from there as so what's needed during the day to the ground crew with their load sheets and uh, it all returns right back to the computer system and to us and back to the farmer for their records. Wet weather can bring urgent requests for aircraft to avoid heavy wheel tracks left by ground rigs. Dry weather can lead to massive outbreaks of insect infestations where aircraft can come to the rescue. It's an important tool. Uh, if the fields are wet, it's certainly an option for them to get out there. Say, for instance, late blight uh, is an issue and the threshold like peaks right away. It's a very effective way for them to get out and apply that that uh, crop protection to the field in a very, very timely manner to prevent the um, infestation or or devastation in their field. Well, the aircraft have a have a spot in the production cycle farmers use. It's not everywhere. Some of this work we can't do by air. A lot of it can be done by ground, so we kind of work together, really. A lot of our customers have big ground sprayers. Once the crop gets to a certain size, depending on the, what we're trying to do, we fit in there rather than in some of the earlier stuff that they can do with their ground rigs. So kind of a complementary thing. The aerial application industry has, uh, you know, generally on a global scale come a long way. I mean, uh, Aircraft technology, uh, you know, the, the increased size of aircraft, the uh, uh, higher standards of training, uh, the equipment in general. I mean, we've talked about airplane equipment, but there's also the support equipment. I mean, the people we have working for us, uh, you know, I mean, we have, we have manuals now, they're properly trained. Uh, uh, the whole the whole aspect of the industry has just come a long way and uh, I think you know as these farm sizes continue to grow they realize that uh, you know a good relationship with an aerial applicator is just an important thing is normal part of business. Yeah, about seven years ago, trying to get into aviation, I decided that uh, being an ag pilot might be uh, an avenue I could take. And uh, after after one season, I was hooked. I'll be an ag pilot until uh, I retire, I think. The best part of the job is is waking up early in the morning, coming out here. There's still dew on the airplane, still dew in the grass. The sun's not even up yet, and uh, you can fire up this uh, six-cylinder engine, and you just away you go. Yeah, some of the typical uh, hazards, I guess, are uh, the obvious uh, power lines are a big issue, uh, the, some of the new uh, cell towers and wind, wind farms, and in addition, there's a lot of um, honeybees and leafcutter bees in the fields used for pollination, so we're restricted in terms of times we can spray insecticide on those fields and, and uh, nearby fields as well. As a pilot in this industry, uh, your number one priority is safety, and every day you work hard to keep that uh, a priority. Other concerns uh, we're always aware of is, is uh, sensitive areas while spraying, whether it be uh, near bees or organic fields, um, yard sites or small towns. Once you have decided ag flying is for you, the next step is to take the certified ag pilot training course, as well as getting a pesticide applicator's permit. Training is a big part of our business nowadays, so we start uh, training for our season in March. Once we are able to pull the planes out in the spring, then we start doing our flight training. Uh, we actually have a session in our training session to remind all of the pilots exactly where the sensitive areas are that we have to remember around this area 
if there's new towers that have gone up and that type of thing, we just try to make everybody aware of it before we start the season and we get busy. From learning the many facets of ag aviation and local operations from the ground up, an ag aviation career is one where continual learning is the norm and safety the number one priority. Now down here on the farm, we certainly notice the benefits of pesticides and plant biotechnology. We're able to increase our yield, which is important for our business, and we're also able to have healthier, viable plants at the end of the day. If we just look at herbicide-tolerant canola as an example, we've been able to increase our yields by up to by 20% and, and even doubled our yield. And so when a producer can produce more crop off of the same piece of land, everybody wins. And we're more environmentally friendly. We have less fuel consumption. We're able to have less water consumption. We're reducing our soil erosion and we're reducing our wind erosion. If you're excited about agriculture and you like new technologies and, and things are going well and the crops are growing well and, and you're profitable. Growing the crops we grow are, are, are difficult, if not impossible, without crop protection products. We have to maintain the yields in order to be profitable. Uh, and they've allowed us to do some different things to, to be more sustainable. We've been doing no-till practices uh, with, with a couple of our crops for probably 20 years on this farm, uh, mostly soybeans and wheat at the moment. We've got fairly light, light soil here, so we want, we're, we're real concerned about soil erosion, uh, both wind and water, and with no-till we can leave the, leave the uh, residue on top. We've seen a lot of advancement in the development of these um, pesticides. And I feel very confident using them. They're very safe, and I have no concerns whatsoever as far as quality of the food that we produce. In fact, I, I believe that our food is better because we use them, particularly the fungicides, where we're eliminating some of the fungus and bacteria that can be present in the, in the crop. The benefits of pesticides are vast, both for the producer and for the consumer. So the average consumer would notice a difference on their grocery bill because of the use of pesticides and plant biotechnology. For example, we've been able to reduce the average family's grocery bill by more than $4,000, which is significant. I'm a farmer. That's my profession. You know, we're in this farm as a business. But I'm also a mom, and I'm feeding my kids the same crops that we grow. So it's really important for me to understand the regulations behind some of the products that we use. And pesticides, as an example, are some of the most highly stringently regulated products in our industry. They go through hundreds of scientific reviews. And I feel comfortable knowing that my children are eating this crop. And I feel really comfortable and confident knowing that Canadians and people around the world are eating the food that we're growing with the use of pesticides and plant biotechnology.